This 2000 PSI Greenworks pressure washer full kit is now available at your local Costco. For about 240 bucks, you get a 2000 PSI 1.2 GPM pressure washer, an actual foam cannon, and a 12 inch surface cleaner. Is that a good deal or not? I don't know yet. We're gonna go ahead and jump into this thing, test it out. Um, we're gonna be looking at the actual performance numbers of the pressure washer. I'm gonna go over the exact pricing of those other items online to see what the value of the pressure washer is and then really gauge if this is a good deal or not. Let me stop you right there really quickly, guys, and just let you know, if you're at Costco and you're just wondering, hey, I don't have time to watch a whole review, I just wanna know, should I get this thing? If you need a solution that has a surface cleaner and the, and the foam cannon, yes, it's a good deal. Then this thing comes out to, it roughly values at about 150 bucks just for the pressure washer, and I think that is a good value. If you don't need this stuff, uh, maybe take a day or two uh, to really figure out which pressure washer you need, or just pick it up, it's Costco, pick it up, take it home, start doing some research on other ones, and you can return it if you need to. But let's go ahead and jump into the video now. Additionally, guys, we're gonna cover this really quickly as well. This is a telescoping handle car wash brush uh, and a uh, little kit, actually. This is available at Costco as well. Again, telescoping handle. It has a rotating head. You just push in this button, you're able to rotate it around. And then also a short handle brush and a wash mitt. So we'll jump into this really quickly to see what I think of this as well. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and unbox this thing and take a look at it, just so we have the idea of the components. So like I said, 2000 PSI pressure washer, 1.2 GPM rated. We'll see what the actual usable numbers are. We have an, a real deal foam cannon a real deal 12 inch surface cleaner. And then again, the Uberflex hose listed as a 25 foot um, option. So again, it's really, really nice that they give you an Uberflex hose. 25 feet in my personal opinion, is still a little bit short. Um, I, I use the 50 foot variation of this, um, but 25 feet is definitely better than a 20 foot hose that some pressure washers come with. Okay guys, so now we're gonna go ahead and start testing this thing. I have it all hooked up here. Uh, it's plugged in, water is on and running into it. There's no leaks or anything, so that's good. Uh, we're gonna run through the tips. We're gonna test the PSI using my little PSI meter here. I just installed some quick connects here on the factory hose. All I'm gonna do is hook this up. All right, now it's coming through there and then connect it here. Okay, we're good. <laughs> We're good. Um, so anyways, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pull the trigger with the machine off, let the water purge out, make sure that we're not getting any air through the system. Now guys, just one thing to note is the Uberflex hose is still a bit uh, wound up and that is just because they store it when you get it, it's kind of wound up so tightly um, in just a really tight radius. So you put that in the sun a little bit. These, again, these things are fantastic. Right now it's a little bit more cumbersome than it normally is, but again, it's just from the storage. So. Keep that in mind. Um, that should be good. I'm gonna go ahead and fire it on. Let it purge out some more. And there it is. So if you did, I don't know if you heard that or not. It does make that squeal sound. Once you release the trigger and pressure builds back up, it will squeal. Let me see if I can get that for you. So. That's actually very, very common with a lot of these kind of entry level style pressure washers, these, uh, these um, electric ones. Not all of them do it, but it's very common. Really quickly guys, I'm gonna go ahead and put the 40 degree nozzle in. I'm going to pull the trigger and I'm gonna test the decibel level of this machine. This isn't the most scientific. I'm using my uh, Apple iPhone um, and the little decibel reader that I have on it. It's not calibrated the way it should be, I understand that, um, but it gives us a good example compared to others. Usually they're in the 83 to 85 range. So about three feet away, keep the handle as far as we can. Let me go ahead and test this. So ambient noise, guys. Bouncing around, there's birds chirping and stuff, but 45-ish. So here we go, about three feet away, pull the trigger. Seventy nine eighty. That's actually a pretty quiet unit, and I did notice that right when I turned it on. Sounds really good, other than that squeal at the end. Additionally, guys, I do have a meter hooked up to it, so I'm going to test the amperage reading on it. So thirteen point seven five or six was the peak. Um, not going to have any issues with running this thing on a fifteen amp breaker. Should be totally fine. Now, as far as the nozzles go, they're usually when you buy aftermarket nozzles, they list the size that they are on the side. These don't have anything listed, so we're gonna test both the 25 and the 40 to see if there's any difference in PSI. 
If there is, then we'll test the GPM of each of them uh, individually as well. If there's not a difference in PSI, then we don't have to. They're going to get the same. So here we go with the 25 degree nozzle. So we're just barely shy of 1900 PSI currently. Hopefully that you guys can see that. I don't know if that's focusing or not. And another thing to take into consideration is over time, these things do break in and get a little bit better. So a 2000 PSI rating is very, very fair. Uh, let me go ahead and grab the 40 degree nozzle now. And if we're at the same numbers, like I said, then, then both these nozzles have the same orifice size. And they do not. We're running about 1550 currently, so probably 1600 over time. And that is with the 40 degree nozzle. So already when the PSI is lower, the GPM is traditionally higher. So that may be better for washing cars. We'll test that as well. Um, and then let's see, just, just for fun, turbo nozzle. Yeah, about 1100 PSI. That's a funny thing. Everyone always expects the, the, the turbo nozzle to be higher PSI. It's always lower, but whatever the, the direction, the pattern, it feels way more powerful. So it does cut through a lot of grime. So great there. Uh, I don't use that on a car. Every once in a while, um, you'll see someone use it on the wheels if the wheels are really damaged. Okay, um, but I wouldn't use it on the paint personally. All right, now I'm gonna grab an aftermarket nozzle as well because I traditionally like to have my pressure washer for washing cars sitting around that 1,000 to 1,200 PSI range. I'm gonna grab some aftermarket ones to see if I can get it into that range and then we'll test the GPM of that as well. Okay, so first up, these are all 40 degree uh, fans, but a 2.5, a 3.0, and a 3.5. Let's test the 2.5. All right, that put us right to 1,200. Let's see if we can go any higher than that. If we can go to the 3.0, um, I'm assuming the 3.5 is gonna drop it too much. Um, but let's see, on the 3.0, maybe we'll be at a thousand-ish. About 950. So my personal side, I, I, I think that's a little bit light, but if the GPM is strong enough on that, then I would be okay with it. So we'll test the factory nozzles, as well as the 2.5 and the 3.0. As always, we have our little measuring bucket here. All I'm gonna do is use uh, each individual nozzle, put it in the bucket, run it for one minute. That'll give us our gallons per minute rating. Okay, so first up is the factory 25 degree nozzle. Again, this is the one that was getting about 1900 PSI. So once again, I'm gonna run this for one minute. Again, guys, I'm monitoring the PSI on it right now. We're actually just barely, barely shy of 1900 right now. It's slowly creeping up. So 1900 for sure. All right, and there is one minute with that factory 25 degree nozzle. Make sure we get all the water in there. Four and a half liters pretty much exactly. So there's liters and quarts listed on here. So we'll bounce back and forth just to see where the exact measurement is and then we can convert from there. All right guys, and that comes to 1.189 gallons per minute. So very, very accurate here. That's almost the two, two, uh, 1.2 gallons per minute and almost 2000 PSI. So again, I think over time it'll break in more. We'll get even closer to that. Um, but that's with the smallest orifice nozzle. The next ones we should increase that, uh, the GPM. So let's go ahead and do that. Factory 40 degree nozzle. Again, this one was getting the, oh man, I can't remember, around 1500 PSI. I'll put it up here for you guys so, you, so we know what it exactly was. Uh, again, gonna put this in and run it for one minute. Alrighty, so there is one minute with this one. So at five liters, we'd be operating at 1.32 gallons per minute. We're not quite five liters though, so I'm gonna give it 4.85. And then we're at 1.281. So um, right around that 1.2, oh, man, so close to 1.3. Uh, yeah, 4.9 would be 1.29. So yeah, we're gonna call it, yeah, 1.28 gallons per minute. We did increase, um, just not a ton. So now we're gonna go ahead and move on to the aftermarket nozzles, the 2.5, 40 degree. 
All right, now that is one minute with the aftermarket 40 degree 2.5 orifice nozzle. All right, so with that, we are getting just a smidge over 1200 PSI. And with that rating, that's 1.42 GPM, gallons per minute. So we're getting into some decent range here. Um, we're gonna go one more, we're gonna go to that 3.0 orifice. Again, that one dropped the PSI a little more than I would want, but if the GPM increases quite a bit, then it's nice to know what options you have. All right guys, so with that 3.0 nozzle, I'm actually sitting right at 1,000 PSI, which isn't bad. So we're gonna see what kind of GPM we're working with here. If it gets us up above 1.5, um, then it's up to you on which nozzle you really wanna use. All right guys, so there is the one minute mark for the uh, aftermarket 40 degree 3.0 nozzle. Now I was monitoring that this and I was getting a proper 1000 PSI. Um, now we're gonna switch over to quartz for this because it's right on the six quart mark. All right, and with that said, we are operating 1000 PSI at 1.585 gallons per minute. So just barely under 1.6, um, 1000 PSI, 1. essentially six, that's probably actually where I would go. Now let's go ahead and test the foam cannon just on the vehicle uh, to show you guys that. And then we'll also test the floor cleaner. And then we're gonna talk about, do I think this thing is actually a good value for the kit? Okay, now to test the foam cannon, I went ahead and filled it up with 750 milliliters of water. I'm gonna go ahead and take 10 pumps of Gion Bathe into the foam cannon. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. All right, we're gonna test that out with uh, the pressure washer, and then we're gonna switch this over into a more premium foam can to see how that performs as well. All right, guys, now for the pressure washer itself for the wand, yes, this plugs right into the end of your long lance that it comes with. However, for me, just for control, I like using a stubby wand here. I'll put a, a couple different options down in the description for you. This one is from Essential Washer, it's blue. Uh, there's also one from McKillen's that I absolutely love. MTM makes great ones. Uh, but here is the foam cannon. and it is really leaking from the top. There is no gasket or anything, it's just the screw down, there's no gasket. So, uh, and again, is that the end of the world? No, it is not, because normally you're gonna be like this anyways, but it's just something to know. All right, so we're turned over, here we go, let's go ahead and test this. Let me change the spray pattern. That's a nice wide pattern there. And I'm going to go ahead and film this for you guys up close as well. All right, so here it is, here we go. All right, so the top is tightened all the way down, which means you're getting the most amount of foam. Uh, let me go ahead and just go the other way just to make sure. Guys, I'm gonna spin it the complete opposite way now. Yeah, and you're just getting water at that point, right? So all the way to the right, and that is the amount of foam that we're getting. Not bad. Um, I don't think this has a 1.1 millimeter orifice in it. Actually, we could test the PSI because I believe a 1.1 millimeter orifice is the equivalent of a 3.0 um, nozzle. Yeah, and we're getting substantially under that. We're getting, gosh, 750. <laughs> Yeah, 750 PSI there. So um, yeah, it's a larger orifice. You would want, if you're gonna run it with this and you want thicker foam, you would switch it out to a 1.1. I have a bunch of videos on how to do that. I'll link them up here for you guys so you can check that out if you want. Or you can just get a more um, premium foam cannon. The one I'm gonna be using here is the MJJC foam cannon. Uh, this is the SV3. I just did a review with this comparing it to the new MTM, which is known to be fantastic as well. Um, but this one or the MJJC, Pro V2, which is really the one that I personally use the most because it has a wider base um, and a slightly wider opening, but this thing is awesome as well. It really just depends on which one you like better, which one uh, based on looks. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the solution directly from this one. All right, whoops, geez. Uh, and pour it directly into this one. Hopefully I don't spill all over myself. All right, now this foam cannon does have a 1.1 millimeter orifice installed, but this foam cannon regardless gets a ton more foam than the competition. Um, if you want the most amount of foam, MJJC, either the Pro or the S, um, the MTM and the Griot's Boss are the ones that I find get the most amount of foam. So here we go, guys. I'm gonna hook it up to this. 
I'm gonna grab my phone again so you can see up close exactly how it's performing. All right, we have the, the knob tightened completely down now. Let's go ahead and test again. There we go. Getting much, much thicker now. Still not as thick as like when you use it with a higher GPM, higher PSI uh, pressure washer, but still, this is a great amount of foam. All right guys, now last but not least, I'm gonna go ahead and rinse this off real quick and then we'll test the uh, floor cleaning, the surface cleaner, and then talk about this thing and think if, uh, I'll let you know if I think you should buy this. All right guys, so we're in a little corner uh, of my house. So this is my garage here. This is a little corner side going down to the side of the house. As you can see, the ground here is not as clean as it should be. So we're gonna test out that surface cleaner on this. Now there is a bunch of debris here. I'm just gonna go ahead and film this for you really quickly with my phone. So we're just gonna pressure wash this stuff away, get that out of the way. But all this stuff is embedded in, um, as you can see, it's all embedded in. Um, and we're gonna hit that and see what kind of results we get with it. All right, so we got the pressure washer fired on. I'm just gonna start off with the 25 degree nozzle. And again, just get this stuff moved out of the way. All right, now you guys may be wondering, couldn't I just go with the tip of the pressure washer nozzle and just go back and forth and remove it that way? Right? And yes, you can, but the, the chances that you're gonna get a nice even finish are very, very slim. So it's nice to have a surface cleaner and then come through and finish up with this. So again, here's the surface cleaner. Again, just basic uh, quarter inch quick connect. So it just goes right into the tip of, the, of your pressure washer wand. I'm gonna spray this so you guys can see, but the force is gonna cause this thing to spin, giving you a nice rotation. These will kind of fan out and you get a nice consistent coverage. Here we go. All right, so you see that movement? I don't know if I sprayed you guys at all, sorry about that. But we're gonna go ahead and use that now on this area and see how it does. All righty guys, so here we go. Again, this whole area has got that black stuff. Let's go ahead and just fire it on and simply work it back and forth. Now it is on a nice, uh, it, it, it functions well, meaning it's on the uh, pressure washer wand. The unit itself isn't wanting to move around all over the place on me, um, so that's nice. As you can see, it is giving a nice consistent clean finish. Is it picking up all that? I don't know, I don't know what it is to be perfectly honest, but all those spots, yeah, no, it's not. It's definitely making it better. You can see right there where we hit it with the pressure washer. So all that, that pressure washer mark's gone now. So definitely better, but not perfect, right? Again, this is a lower powered surface cleaner. This isn't gonna be Apparently, this isn't gonna be the right choice for larger jobs like this where stuff's actually sort of embedded itself into the concrete. I mean, we can try and scrub it more with the edge. Still not anything really going on. All right, let's go ahead and pause this now. We're gonna rinse this down. I'm gonna hit this again with the 25 degree or maybe even let's do the uh, turbo nozzle just for fun. And then we'll see how it goes and hit it again with this to even everything out. And let's go ahead and hit this now with the turbo nozzle. And there you go, guys. That's pulling it up and pulling it out and making everything nice. Again, though, this is probably, uh, it's doing a great job of pulling out all that deeper stuff. The problem with this is it's probably gonna leave a track of where it, especially if you didn't hit it with the surface cleaner first, it'll leave a track of wh exactly where this went. And you don't want that either, right? So um, it's kind of a working balance, unless you have like a crazy high end or, um, higher powered unit. You kind of have to go back and forth and work this over a few different ways to get a perfect result. And that's totally fine. You can still get that perfect result with it, but just know that it's gonna take a little more time. All right, now as you guys can see, this section, if I go too fast, leaves that pattern. You see? So then you have to work it slower, right? Just back and forth, which is fine. Once again, it's doing the job, but I wanna see if, um, I don't know. Let's just keep working this real quick and then we'll do a final pass. Well, let's see if the um, surface cleaner can handle that stain. All right, guys, so we have it hooked up again. Let's go ahead and test. Gonna get it going, it's fired on. Let's go ahead and up here to this stain. Yeah, I mean, that definitely made a big impact on it, as you can see. Yeah, so again, guys, just be, let's see here, let's go over that. You're gonna get a lot more surface area done as long as it's not too deep and too dirty. 
if we're just talking general cleaning and you just want a nice consistent even finish, the surface cleaner is great. If you need something where there's significant staining, it's probably not the exact best choice, but like I said, if you pair it with the other items that this thing comes with, then it does get the job done quite well. So now we hit all that, I'm just gonna switch over to the 25 degree, blast this out just to give it a nice uh, finishing wash, and then we should be good. All right, now we're just gonna go ahead and let this dry out. We'll come and revisit it once it's dry to see how it looks in comparison to the other portion that I didn't hit, uh, touch. All right, guys, so here's the before and after. This is the area I did not do, and there is the area that I did do. So you can see the color difference is substantial. Um, same thing from here to here. So it definitely does the job very, very well. All right, guys, so there's the performance of this thing, right? Not bad at all, especially when uh, two things for a pressure washer, right? Usually one is for cleaning hard surfaces, your driveway, things like that, the siding on your house, all that kind of good stuff. This thing gets up to 1900 PSI currently, brand new out of the box, so I'm sure it'll get to that 2000 once it breaks in over time. We were also right just under that 1.2 GPM, so accurate numbers. They list it 2000 PSI, 1.2 GPM, and that's just about what it's getting. Now you can manip manipulate those numbers, especially if you want to, you know, the other reason to have a pressure washer is to wash your car. And for that, I recommend going with either a 2.5 or a 3.0 orifice nozzle. You do have to get those aftermarket. I'll have them linked in the description for you. Uh, again, with the 3.0, we're getting 1,000 PSI and like 1.6, just about GPM, so not bad at all. Um, now, let's talk about the actual value of this unit and if it's right for you, because if you don't need the foam cannon or if you don't need the uh, surface cleaner, then then you're essentially paying $240 for this pressure washer, which I think you can find alternatives in that price range. Um, you can go like an active VE52 that if you're just doing it for, for washing your car, that's gonna have you know close to that two gallons per minute rating. So I would go that route. However, for the people, especially you know shopping at Costco, it's usually home users that just want stuff, something that's gonna work all the way around. And they build this out so that you have every option you need. Again, this, foam cannon here from Greenworks. Just a simple search online. It is available at Lowe's. You could just buy just this unit if you wanted to. The foam cannon normally retails for 40 bucks. It's currently on sale for about 32 bucks. Same thing goes with the surface cleaner, also available at Lowe's. Uh, normally $44, currently on sale for 35 bucks. So if we take those sale prices out though, and we just go with the normal pricing of $44 and $40, we're at 84 bucks minus the 240 that we spent on this thing. So what are you at? Uh, $156 for the pressure washer itself. That is a good value, guys. If you need this other stuff, that is a very good value. If you look at like the Ryobi uh, 2000 PSI it, with a nice little cage on it, that one retails for about 199 bucks. Similar units to that are all in that price range. So at 156, it is a good deal. I like the pressure washer. It performed well. It's got nice storage um, for your wand, for the hose, for the cord, all that kind of good stuff. Um, the wheels are fine, nothing excessive, but they're nice and oversized. Um, the soap injection on the front, again, I don't recommend using. Uh, the only downside of this thing is you do have that squeal at the end once the pressure builds back up. But again, that's pretty common with a lot of these pressure washers. So um, overall guys, with these, it brings it down to 156. Yes, good value. If you don't need these, then I would probably go another route. Again, I love the fact that Greenworks ships with an Uberflex hose. It's always my favorite, however, while I was washing the truck, while I was working, um, doing the surface cleaning out here, 25 feet still is too short for me, personally. I'm used to a 50 foot hose and it is so nice to have all that, that room to work. Um, this, I just felt a little too constricted. So with that said, guys, I will leave the rest up to you. I just wanted to bring out the facts, uh, test the performance of this thing. I think it's a good unit. I think it performs really, really well. Foam cannon, you would wanna switch out to a 1.1 Orifice for sure. Uh, and then this guy um, did a fine job. Don't expect it to, to blast through a gigantic driveway. But for small jobs, it's gonna be a good solution for you. Now moving on from there, guys, just really quickly, I wanna to touch on this brush combo kit that they have. Uh, no, I would not recommend it personally, just because the bristles of the brush, like just running my hand across it, it feels like it's gonna scratch paint. It feels a little too, um, a little too aggressive, a little too gritty, I wanna say. It's not obviously not gritty, there's nothing to it, but um, it just feels like it could potentially scratch the paint of your car. I personally would not use this on any of my personal vehicles. Now, when we go into the brush here, again, this thing is a flag tip, so meaning it's a brush and then it splits off the ends as well. The side one here, um, the little handle, 
Same thing, so would that work cleaning your fenders, cleaning the face of your wheels? Yeah, I'm sure it would, no problem. The uh, wash mitt also feels quite cheap though. So I would bypass this thing, guys. What I personally use um, when I need a brush extension, let me grab it for you, is this guy here. This is the Mitt on a Stick Pro from a company called Auto Fiber. Um, I sell these on my website, you can get them online. You can actually get extensions. This actually just screws off. It's full, uh, full metal or aluminum frame, I guess. Um, so there's no actual joint. It goes into itself, so you don't feel any movement. Um, it's fantastic. I absolutely love it, and they give you premium options for your, your uh, wash head. However, I will say this is on a 100% completely different scale. It's about $84 for this unit. So I get that this is not for everyone, uh, but just, just regardless of um, what you're using, you don't want to use something that's going to damage your car. I didn't use this on my car. I'm afraid to personally, from my experience of using different things. Um, this is just not where I'd go. So I would pass on this personally, but this, I think it's a good unit. So that's it for today's video, guys. I hope that it helps you. Please make sure to like the video, make sure you subscribe, turn on that notification bell, and we will see you on the next one.